about point clouds. Now before we dive right into the Unity example files, let's talk a little bit about what the vertices are that are being created and how they relate in 3D space. Now I'm going to jump into Moto, which is a 3D um, package modeling animation, uh, you know, just the regular, and I'm just going to create a sphere real quick. And so what you're seeing is a geometry. This geometry is made up of a few components. And so uh, Moto puts their components up here. So we have our vertices, we have our edges, and then we have polygons. And so what the way this works is this vertices, when four vertices, or really when three vertices are connected, it creates a geometry. It, so it can create a triangle. So right now polygons are, are when you have four vertices, and so together they make up one. Uh, our edges are the connection between two vertices. And so same thing, if you have uh, three edges, you create a triangle. If you have four edges, you create a polygon. And both give you a geometry. Now, when you're using the tangle, the tangle will actually register vertices. And so if I actually, I'm, I'm going to create a copy of this real quick. What will happen is, is let's say this, this sphere is any object in your real world. What will happen is, is um, the tangle at the moment does not create geometry, but instead uh, creates vertices from all of that data. So I'm just going to grab all these vertices, copy, I'm just going to paste it into here. And so what happens is, is in the real world, you see this. You know, you, you get this nice geometry, whatever it is, and the tangle actually sees this. And so these vertices are what get created. And in Unity, I'll show you in the, in the code where it actually creates, uh, it takes a mesh and then it just drops these vertices in there. It doesn't actually create all of the connections because that's a little more complicated. However, this is what you get. Um, on top of that, if I do this real quick, this is typically what you'll get inside of Unity and uh, your example file. And these will just be colored something differently. Um, and that's just from Unity's um, shader. Something to take note of is, is when you're looking at real world space, uh, you know, or real world objects, uh, it's actually twofold. So one, there is a depth sensor on uh, the Tango devices that uses infrared. And so lighting often is where you you find your first big hurdle when you're working with, uh, you know, the regardless of whether it's it's the pose or the motion tracking, or area learning, but specifically with this data with the depth sensors, uh, you want to have a nice even lighting. Anything that gives off too much infrared light will end up messing up the the calculations. But it's not only done with the depth sensor. It's actually um, heavily image process as well and so what ends up happening is, is so you'll have this back uh, you know what let me I'm actually going to do something a little different inactive mesh I'm going to have it just show a solid color that way we can see what's on top and then you know what I'm actually going to get rid of the grid as well I always love doing live videos. <laughs> it forces you to, to be somewhat accurate with, with the way you do things. All right, so so what we have here is this. This is what, what you know, a real world object looks like. This is what happens, uh, you know, when we see whatever, a phone, uh, a bottle. The tangle will actually also take points around that image and use that data as markers as well. So you, you're getting a two, you know, so you're getting a two prong approach to, to how depth is calculated. So the images play a, a pretty, you know, significant role in how that data is calculated. And so now that we have a quick intro into just geometry in general and how it works, what we're going to do now is jump into Unity and I'll actually walk you through the project itself.
in our scene, we have really a few things that are actually important. Of course, we always need our Tango Manager with, in this case, we want to make sure we have the correct settings set up. Uh, enable Depth is what we need here. We have a Tango Simple Camera. So this camera rig that we have here um, does a few things. And first and foremost, we have the camera itself. Um, but this is just Tango's camera. And then we have this pose over here. And this is what, uh, you know, shows you a trail. So when you're moving around, you can see it. So this is, all of this is just literally, you know, Tango-related information, just so you see the camera. This isn't necessary. What is necessary is the Tango Point Cloud Controller. Now, I will say this is a blessing compared to what we had in December and February. Uh, you know, it was just, it was much more complicated. Um, it was a much more complicated setup. And so all you really need is this point cloud file, um, which is our, our controller. Now you can add, so right now we have this point cloud um, shader here, and that's what you're going to see on the screen when you see the, those blue, red um, vertices. That comes from this shader. Not important if you want to show that you can do that, but really, if you're if you're using the point cloud data, chances are you're just looking for raw data. So that's it. That's all you need is this and the Tango Manager. So let's jump into the code. All right. So I have point cloud vertices highlighted, and the reason for that is I want to start off with exactly what you need, and that's just this. Now this variable isn't global, but you can make it global um, by, instead of setting it here, you can go ahead and actually set this uh, up here instead. You can choose wherever you want, it doesn't really matter. And so we can do public, and same thing, we want a vector three, and then you want to set this to the variable name. Now you'll notice that if I if I do it this way, this is something that you know you should be keen on why it's here. If I do it this way, what'll happen is, is this will actually um, it'll actually throw an error. And the reason for that is is this point cloud vertices is actually an array of vector three vertices. And so and you want to make sure that when you set your variables, if you want it to be a collection of some sort, that you set that collection ahead of time. Um, this is using a just a straight array, and so we can just set this um, by giving the, the brackets. And that's what we had down here. And so now when, when we set the point cloud data, it'll be something that isn't local in scope and can be accessed anywhere. Uh, you know, this is very important if you want to, to do anything else with the data. Remember, you don't want to um, especially within this this Tango, anytime you have a Tango service, you want to keep Unity out of it, which is what it's telling you here. You know, <laughs> don't use a Unity API. And so, by having this as something that's global instead of local, you don't need to worry about much of what's in here. But this is broken down into really two sections. One is getting the pose data. This is basically coordinating the pose information and sp I'm spitting out the function so it's not so condensed, you know, all in, in this one area. Uh, let's see, number of vertices. So this is, an, this is really, really important. And so if the tangled depth is set up, if we scroll up a little bit, so if we are receiving tangled data and it's not equal to null, and we have some points, then the function goes, and so that so that's where most of our our, our code is embodied. Is is and uh, you know if we have data and if we have um, points. If we come down here, you know we have the number of active vertices. Uh, that's what's currently visible, uh, and and you know so that's pretty much your your scope of or your max. Uh, points that you're going to see in that particular scene. And that's where, if we go back into Unity, um, there's actually a fulcrum. And so from here to here, these are the, the, the active points that, that you're going to see in that area. Uh, next, what we have is, is we have this 
uh, this area that, that, that takes care of the conversion, still, like most of the post data, Unity's, um, Unity and OpenGL have one format, so you don't have to worry about that conversion, but you still have to worry about a real-world conversion, plus you have to worry about the RGB conversion, because remember, this is still using image data, so you have to convert, uh, you know, what, if you took a picture, you have to convert the data and the points that are used as markers from the pictures as well, and so that's what all of this ha um, is doing, it's just doing all those conversions, uh, and we have matrices which are, are actually down here mm, nope. where are matrices set up? here you go and so we have some some matrices that are set up and their values are actually initiated up here so they're in global and not a local um, scope and so that goes through combines them and sets them all in one uh, place and so what we end up having after all of, uh, you know, the the calculations are done is we have a number of vertices, which is our ver count. And so what we have now is when we go through the vertices, we know this is the, the, the total number of vertices that we have. And we're all, over here, what we're going to do now is, is we're going to, to then, this pulls out the data based off of the vertices, I mean, based off of the matrix. And so now what we have is, is we're getting... Um, for each active vertice, we're getting that particular data. And so this is the most important portion of the whole entire function. And that's the reason why I pulled it out of the local scope and put it out of global scope. And it's because, let's be honest, if you're doing anything that's point cloud related, it doesn't have to be creating meshes, but if you're doing anything point cloud related, this is the only set of data you're going to need. Everything else you can literally copy the controller and leave it uh, you know, as it is. And just for visual purposes, what happens is, is we have access to this M mesh. So if I go up to M mesh, you'll see it's just a mesh. And the way you get the mesh in Unity is you have a mesh filter. And so up here in, in the start, what you have is, is you have uh, first we, we get the component um, for the mesh filter and then we just pull out just the mesh uh, you know po portion of the filter then we clear the mesh you know set the triangles and you know recalculate the bounds and normals you know just that's just you know 3d talk for well no let's not do that let me just show you what those are now if I go back into moto and I select our sphere what we can do is, is, so I can show you the vertices, and so what you have is, is you have the vertices, but you can also, each one of these vertices has normals. I'm not going to go too deep into the, uh, you know, the explanation of it, but a normal basically is the direction it's facing. And so each one of these, if I grab a polygon, in the center, there's a, there's a line that extends out and that extends out for for each one of these polygons and it gives it a direction and so you can think of it as you know similar to you know a vector or a magnitude how it has a, a direction attached to it and so if you wanted to let's say do something for example uh, you have a character walking um, and they're walking across a sphere well if you're trying to make, you know, figure out, well, what's the angle of the sphere and, and what's the radius, maybe I can use that. Uh, you can actually use the vertices, um, excuse me, you can actually use the normals to give you the exact angle in which it's at. And, you know, that's a, you know that's something I'll actually show in a more advanced Unity video um, that I'm working on. And how you can take advantage of using the mesh's vertices to, to really map something to... Uh, you know, to a an actual geometry, and so that's what the vertices, uh, you know, resetting the vertices. It just makes it just resets it so that it's correct. Uh, you know, especially when as you're updating all the different points and vertices, you want to make sure that the normals are correct. And so, uh, when we do have all of our point data, the mesh first gets cleared because it has vertices, and so the mesh gets cleared then these vertices are then set for the, the particular mesh. Remember the vertices are, if I jump back into Modo, the vertices are all of these little dots that you see here. So it pretty much deletes them and then resets them. Uh, 
assess a triangle and then you won't actually see that data and so what what you would actually see is if I deselect this well of course inactive meshes what you'll see is this and so that last line actually gives you this so if I go back into our code um, this mesh topology so what this does is so it sets the indices uh, but this sets the actual points so you can view the points themselves and that's pretty much you know the 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 in a, in a nutshell what the point cloud system is and how it works uh, once again, really the only thing that you need here is this portion. The mathematics behind it is quite intense. There's no reason to actually use it. All you need to know is the vertices, and the vertices are each individual vertex or point on the screen. And this just shows them. So if you want to do any customization, if you want to do any type of uh, you know, application utility, and you just needed to know the vertices, this would be how you'd get the vertices. So, hope you enjoyed the video. I try to make it a little more in depth because of the long time frame. I really wanted this for the weekend. Um, but Tango device was acting funny. So, which is also why I don't have a, a recording of the actual device. Actually, it's actually charging, which is even better. This thing dies while even plugged in. I'm, I'm, I can't wait for. Uh, <laughs> for beta 2.0 so I hope Qualcomm you know fixes some of these issues uh, so as before this is Edith and Ablar from Passion 47 look out for some more videos still gonna give you all the example files you know explaining them showing you how to use them and I can't wait until uh, you know just probably a little longer when I can show you some real cool examples of what you can do with the Tango so if you have any questions you can hit up hit us up on YouTube. Uh, you can at Passion Forty Seven on Twitter. Uh, but like always, you know the best place for for the Tango is is, is the community. So uh, hit us up on on um, on Google Plus and just drop a line. Edison Abelard, I'm out.